good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town on 99.7, 1450WHTC and WHTC.com. And we welcome you to Talk of the Town for this Wednesday, April the 8th. I'm Gary Stevens. Glad you are with us. We'll have some open line time following the 10 and 11 o'clock news blocks. We'll be joined in about an hour with Patty Vandenberg, What's New Around Allen. And we'll have in our 1030 segment, Ottawa County Sheriff Sergeant Eric Westfield Mayor from the Marine Division, as uh, he'll be talking about boating and boating safety and water safety, especially in this situation we are in right now. We'll have a Zoom conversation with him. But in our first half hour, we have a Zoom conversation with Ottawa County Clerk Justin Roebuck, who's on the other line uh, end of our connection. Justin, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hey, good morning, Gary. It's good to be with you. Glad to be able to uh, do this uh, virtually now and uh, <laughs> uh, getting all the uh, the kinks work out. We appreciate your patience uh, while we took care of a couple of matters on WHTC Morning News that uh, ran a yeah. little bit long. But uh, hey, you we bet. try to answer questions as we go along. Uh, and you can join the conversation as well. Not via Zoom, but uh, through the traditional phone line at 395-1450-395-1450. I am going to go first before we talk about anything else. I want to get this out of the way. Sure. Um, the former president of the Ottawa County Patriots, Jim Sciotto, um, says this. Um, he has said he has filed as a candidate in the August primary election for supervisor of Park Township. First of all, uh, can I ask you, A, has you received those documents, and B, the filing deadlines for the August primary that would normally be in May, have you gotten any guidance from the Secretary of State's office in Lansing or perhaps from the governor's office, Justin Roebuck, as to whether or yeah. not that deadline has been extended? Yeah, so um, as to Mr. Chioto's documents, I, I believe we have received them. So the local clerks, um, obviously our 23 local jurisdiction clerks, they are the filing officials for the township offices. Um, and so they, once they receive them, they send them on to the county. Obviously, we have to program the ballot. We need that information. Um, we do have a candidate listing up on the web that we're keeping current to date, um, and that is at miottawa.org. Uh, slash elections. You can find all the candidates who filed for public office there. Um, and, and you're right, the, the filing deadline has been a matter of concern for a couple, uh, for candidates across the state, really, particularly those candidates that are required to collect signatures. Um, congressional candidates and judicial candidates all have to collect, uh, they're required to collect signatures. They don't have a filing fee option like the rest of the candidates who, who file for office do. Um, we have heard no official word yet from the governor. Uh, Secretary Benson has requested that the filing deadline be extended to May 12 um, from, the, uh, from the April 21 filing deadline. At this point, we are still operating as, as uh, April 21 at 4 p.m. is the filing deadline. We've heard nothing additionally from the governor on that. Uh, when you delay it too far, it begins to affect uh, programming deadlines that we have pretty tight timeframes as well that we not only have to uh, program the ballot but we also have to send um, candidates ballot proofs uh, in enough time legally statutorily they have to get the ballot proof and approve that and then send it back to us uh, some of that can be done electronically but it still does uh, make a very tight timeline for us so if you got a question for Ottawa County Clerk Justin Roebuck, you'll take it at 395-1450, 395-1450. Justin, how is the clerk's office handling the situation right now in staffing, availability, and uh, dealing with not only clerk matters, but also register of deeds matters? Yeah. Yeah, we are, um, you know, we're adjusting like everyone else to a very different world and a new normal right now. Uh, we have 37 total staff. Uh, we have about six of those 37 uh, frontline staff people working in the office, uh, five in our, our court system who are working on a daily basis, uh, just supporting the court operation. Uh, we, we then have another couple of staff who are rotating in and out of the office, not every single day, but we're 
uh, on the vital records and, and registered deed side uh, processing mail. Um, but you know what's fortunate for us, particularly in register of deeds, but also in vital records, a lot of the stuff we're doing can be done remotely because we have so many online transactions. So in register of deeds, we're 70% online uh, uh, electronic recording of documents, basically. And that's a secure portal that you know uh, vendors can go to to record documents. Um, and we've processed uh, several thousand documents in the month of March. Um, in fact, we, we receded in over 1.2 um, million in um, state transfer tax in the month of March. So that's a, a little bit above average um, process for us. And certainly, certainly the last couple of weeks in March would have, you know, the, the stay at home order, the, the, the slowdown beginning to happen because of the virus, we would have seen that uh, during the last couple of weeks. So it's gonna be very telling to see what April brings, but uh, we're hanging in there and we're still doing a lot of uh, work for our customers remotely by mail and then of course those emergency appointments which are still available now i we've talked before about some of the things that you're involved with uh with the uh, uh for lack of a better term the clerks association other clerk, sure. uh, county clerks uh across the state so to a certain extent you're not in an island you're not operating uh, as if nobody else is around you are getting support from other clerks that may have had the same maybe going through some of the same challenges and perhaps giving some tips of how they are meeting those challenges in a unique way. Yeah, you know, I, I completely agree. We, we've been on, um, you know, I've been on the phone and on email with all of my colleagues from around the state, 83 clerks that, um, you know, communicate on a fairly regular basis as we go back and forth and say, um, you know, what, uh, what is it that you're doing? How are you handling this particular situation? And it's interesting because there are 83 different ways of handling some of this stuff. Um, but on, on the whole, and by and large, I think we are um, pretty much on the same page with a lot of, uh, a lot of this stuff. Bob Janetsky and I talk frequently. He's a good colleague and friend. Um, and that's been very helpful in Allegan, of course. Um, but I'm also in communication with, with a, lot of our, um, a lot of my colleagues as to how we best proceed with some of this stuff. You know, particular counties uh, earlier on were, were more lax than others in terms of the closing to the public. Um, Ottawa County was one of the, um, you know, one of the later arrivals in West Michigan in terms of closing to the public, but us and Kent, I think, went at about the same time. Um, but again, I think one of the things that's helpful is to have that community there of folks where we are, you know, trying to serve our customers as best we can throughout the state and making sure that um, those basic needs are met, the essential services that we have are met um, and, and moving forward as a team. Again, if you have a question for Ottawa County Clerk, Justin Roebuck, he'll be happy to answer it at 395-1450, 395-1450. As of right now, we are supposed to have an election uh, coming up in May for May yeah. the 5th. But right now we've seen, and we talked about this in our earlier conversation where districts are pulling their votes out so that perhaps there won't be a May election. But I'm gonna ask you this particular question. What lessons could be learned by what happened in Wisconsin yesterday <laughs> where they held their presidential preference primary yeah. as scheduled that could possibly be having to be done in Michigan uh, on, on, May, on May 5, when perhaps there is going to have to be an election being held. Yeah. Well, you know, Wisconsin's a really interesting example of this because, you know, as, as a, um, a nation, Michigan and Wisconsin are very, very similar in how we have, um, how we conduct our election processes in terms of we're really the only two states in the country that are specifically home rule states where local city and township clerks uh, conduct elections and the county sort of oversees this in an administrative role. Um, uh, most other states, the county governments run the election process. So Wisconsin, you know, while they have a lot of similarities, what, what just happened there is very different than what's been proposed even for May. Obviously, Wisconsin's presidential primary um, was scheduled for April 7 and, and was conducted. Um, but they also had a ton of municipal races on the ballot. You know, the, the Milwaukee city mayor 
on the ballot. Um, they had a state Supreme Court uh, position open statewide. So they did have a lot of other items on the ballot other than just the primary, but they also have different rules uh, with regard to the conduct of their elections. Um, for example, Wisconsin does not follow Michigan's model of uh, connecting the voter file with the Secretary of State database for driver licenses. So what that means is they don't have as up to date a voter roll process as we do in Michigan. So when it comes to mailing, uh, like we're doing in Michigan under the governor's executive order, we're mailing out absentee ballot applications to everyone, every single registered voter who has an election uh, on May 5. Wisconsin would have a difficult time doing that because their records are not as up to date um, as Michigan's are when, when that, that file is connected like that. Uh, the other problem they have is, is the, the challenges they had with their absentee ballots. They require a witness signature before your absentee ballot can be counted. Obviously, that's a, a struggle right now for a lot of people. Um, so they had some laws and some procedures that were in place that were really making it way more challenging to conduct a, uh, an election by mail. Whereas Michigan, I think, I think we're doing the right thing in terms of holding this election by mail. Um, now, certainly we, we were strong advocates for our local school districts moving the proposals if they could. Um, the particular districts that are on the ballot right now, which are Grand Haven Public Schools, Hudsonville, and uh, Kennewa Hills also has a, a bond proposal. But for, for Grand Haven and Hudsonville, this was a, a millage, uh, operating millage renewal that was literally going to cost them millions of dollars in, in the summer tax bill. If they if they don't conduct this election in May, so there there are some serious elements to it, and I believe that we've got a process in place right now where we can safely conduct this election by mail, and that's definitely what we're working toward. And what about in person? Can is that uh, yeah. even being discussed as well? Well, yes, the governor's executive order does allow for in person voting, but really it's it's particularly uh, geared toward anybody who needs the assistance with it. Um, so if a voter needs assistance in, in uh, marking their ballot or filling out their ballot, there are absolutely options for that. So every jurisdiction, we have 13 in Ottawa County, um, but each one of those 13 jurisdictions will have an open uh, polling location. And, and in, in all cases, it's at the local clerk's office, uh, except for one. I think we have one township where the, the, the clerk's, the polling location is actually going to be the open uh, location for voters to go. Yeah, yeah real quick, uh, Justin, before we take our break, you mentioned Grand Haven, Hudsonville Schools, and part of Ottawa County that's in the Kennewa Hills District. Yeah. Those are the only votes that's going to be done on the 5th of May. Everybody else pretty much has the uh, has that day off. That's right. Yep. So we just have those three districts within Ottawa County. It's about 70,000 registered voters within the county, um, but everyone else has been able to move their questions off of the May 5 ballot which to a certain extent, that's good. That is very, very, very good. Yeah, we're very thankful for that. Um, part of the concern that uh, state lawmakers had yesterday was uh, trying to get uh, information from the executive branch about uh, hospital beds and fatalities, or more importantly, who's recovered from COVID-19. That is why they didn't give the governor a blanket 70-day extension, instead going incrementally. That's part of the reasons. Uh, part of maybe getting the numbers to lawmakers stems from your office. And unfortunately, you've not mm -hmm. had to do this yet, Justin, and that is uh, death certificates. Yeah, right. Absolutely. You know, basically our, our process with the MDHHS, which is our um, the state registrar of vital records operates out of that office in Lansing. Uh, part of our processes with them include, uh, you know, real-time communication on any death records that we do receive um, where the death is deemed as a result of COVID-19. And thankfully, as you said, I mean, thankfully we, we don't have that yet within Ottawa County and, and we're uh, fortunate in that. And I think, um, you know, overall, it's encouraging to see our numbers here in Ottawa County. And I think part of that is re, you know, related to the fact that we, we're a healthy county in general. We're less, uh, less urban than a lot of these other places that we're seeing, certainly in Southeast Michigan, but even in Kent County. Um, and, and so far we have yet to record an actual death record uh, where the cause of death is COVID-19. 
Um, but we do have a process in place for, for getting that information immediately out to, uh, essentially to the state. And then the state relays it over. One final thing in the notes you said, and I hate to end our conversation on this note, but uh, yeah, stay home, stay safe is also mean uh, adding some stress. It's not in your jurisdiction. It's more for mental health. Yeah. But your office processed 40 PPOs in March. That's six more than in February. People are needing to stay together, but unfortunately that's causing issues too. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, that that's always a challenge when, you know, we, we even see it uh, in the court system around holidays and times where families are together. Sometimes that is a difficult time. And certainly with the added stress of everything right now. Um, so emergency uh, appointments at the court level obviously include personal protection orders. Those are, those are important elements of uh, our emergency services. And you, know, you can call our office to schedule one of those. Hopefully you don't need it. Hopefully yeah. none of our listeners would need it, but yep. uh, we're definitely there for that if need be. Justin Roebuck, the Ottawa County Clerk and Register of Deeds, thank you very much for joining us today on WHTC's Talk at the Town via Zoom. We'll put a link to your website when we put this podcast up on our website at whtc.com. Hopefully we can chat either via this or in person next month. Sounds great. Thanks a lot, Gary. Thank you very much. That's Justin Roebuck, the Ottawa County Clerk and Register of Deeds on the WHTC Talk of the Town program. CBS News with Peter King, followed by WHTC News with Patrick Nichols straight ahead on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC.